It's April 25th, 2013, and this is Pocket Gamer to give you some first impressions of the week's new and noteworthy iOS games. Robot Unicorn Attack was actually one of the earliest endless runners on the App Store, and it was definitely the gaudiest, all painted in pink and rainbows and looked like something you'd see on a six-year-old girl's diary. This surprise sequel is much of the same, it's still about jumping and dashing until your robot head crunches into a wall, but there are some new enemies and unlockable worlds. The real change though is in its grindy free to play structure, its bucket of social features and ditching Erasure's synth pop masterpiece always in favour of some phony 80s ditty. Gameloft is back with another movie tie-in. This time we step into the hot rod red shoes of Iron Man and take to the skies above Malibu. It's an endless flyer, so think Temple Run in the sky with robots. You'll dodge billboards, you'll collect credits, you'll defeat robots and you'll finish objectives for Jarvis and Pepper Potts. It certainly looks nice, but it has its faults. Controlling Iron Man either with touch or tilt can sometimes feel like guiding an umbrella in a hurricane and the game is jam-packed with in-app purchases and Gameloft never misses an opportunity to sell you something. I would say give it a go because it looks nice and you know it's okay, but as it takes up nearly one gigabyte of space on your device, I'll say save your bandwidth. If you've never played one of these licensed LEGO games before, they're very simple little brawlers for kids with a touch of platforming and some puzzles thrown in for good measure. This latest one has Batman characters like Bane and Robin of course, but you can also play as Lego versions of other DC comic heroes like Aquaman, Flash, Superman and Lois Lane. Uh, if you don't want to wait you can buy them within that purchases. It's pretty fun but it's very simple, the controls aren't perfect. Uh, and if you don't have a child to play with, you'll probably get bored of it quite soon. Mr. Runner 2 is an odd little auto runner. In this game, you press on the right side of the screen to speed up and on the left to slow down and you'll use this ability to avoid being squished by these big falling platforms. The original game was a pixelated black and white affair. This new one is bursting with colour and charm and character and it's filled with references to retro video games and other type things. I haven't played it too much but it's definitely one deserving of further investigation. Ravenous Games and Wobblyware have turned churning out pixelated platformers into something of a fine art and seem to be able to throw a new one onto the App Store every single month. This time it's the turn of Random Heroes 2, a plodding little run and gun shooter with a huge cast of weird characters to play as, think jesters, nurses, kings and Abraham Lincoln. This sequel adds diagonal aiming and larger maps, but if you didn't know where to look, you'd be hard pressed to figure out if this was actually a new game at all. It's a very safe sequel to a pretty average game. Gun Commando is another one of those pseudo retro games, you know, ones that do everything in their power to fit in with the games of two decades prior. So like Duke Nukem 3D, this iOS shooter has cheesy action hero one-liners, a nonsensical story and flat 2D enemies in blocky 3D worlds, but it also features the sort of brainless gameplay of those, uh, those older shooters, you know, the uninspired gunfights and maze-like levels for you to get lost in. There is this novel mechanic where your gun gets better as you accurately land shots but it doesn't really relieve the boredom much. Add in some rather wonky touchscreen controls and you know maybe this one should have stayed in the 90s. How 
House of the Dead Overkill was a campy, violent and wonderfully profane light gun shooter for the Wii and it was inspired by cult exploitation flicks. These lost tapes, now on iOS, are set in the same world and with the same characters but the levels have been remixed and there's other bits of fresh content here and there. It's quite a lot of fun, you move automatically about and you just line up your shots either with a sort of virtual d-pad or by using the accelerometer. It's simple, it's shallow, but, you know, capping zombies in the head has a sick thrill to it. Uh, this one also has in-app purchases, and despite advertising three levels in the iTunes description, you'll be expected to pay another £1.49 for the final chapter. Very naughty, Sega, very naughty. Talisman Prologue is a digital version of Games Workshop's fantasy die rolling board game, Talisman. This is a single player game, but a multiplayer version will be coming later this year, possibly as an update to this game. I don't know much about board games, so bear with me and maybe read our review from someone who actually knows his D20s from his meeples instead. But, um, you know, this one has got 10 characters to pick from, 50 quests, it's got weapons, you can battle bears and apes and all sorts. I, I'm no expert, but it seems to be a pretty good digital reimagining of a much loved board game. Mad Monster is a cross between Rampage and a bouncy ball because whenever your mutant creature hits something, it bounces higher up into the sky. So to reach the highest reaches of space, you need to keep a combo going by bouncing from tank to helicopter to stealth fighter to satellite to space station. It's a little repetitive and can be frustrating when you fall all the way back down to the ground, but it is a clever and unique idea and it's executed well. The controls are good and the different objectives will keep you bouncing. It is a Chilingo game though, so watch out for in-app purchases and slightly grindy gameplay. 